Good morning, Grade 5 Mathletes! Welcome back to our Valenzuela Lab in Mathematics 5. We are now on Quarter 4, Week 6. Are you excited to our new lessons for today? Great! I am Mrs. Elizabeth R. Aguilar, your teacher today. But before we proceed, I want you to do the following so your teacher will recognize your attendance and part participation. First, type in your complete name, grade and section, your subject teacher, and your school in the comment box. Second, if you like to answer during our discussion, simply type in your answer in the comment box. And if you have some questions about the lesson discussed, you may also type in your questions before the session ends. In today's lesson, you will be able to learn the following. First, organize data in tabular form and present them in a line graph. Second, interpret data presented in different kinds of line graphs, single to double line graph. But before we we'll start, let's have a review of our lesson last week. Do you still remember our lesson last week? Very good, Matlitz. It's all about the reading and measuring temperature. So I have here the directions. The table shows the temperatures in different cities in the country. Answer the questions based on that table. So in the column one, we have the cities, Valenzuela, Baguio, Tugigaraw, Cebu, and Tagaytay. In the second column, we have the temperature. In Valenzuela, it is 30 degrees Celsius. In Baguio, we have 19 degrees Celsius. To, to Gigarao, we have 39 degrees Celsius. In Cebu, we have 29 degrees Celsius. And in Tagaytay, we have 26 degrees Celsius. Now, I want you to answer the first question based on our table presented. Which city has the coldest temperature? Very good, Matlitz. It's Baguio City. How about for the second question? Which city has the hottest temperature? Very good. It's Tugigarao City. And how about for the third question? What is the difference between the temperature in Baguio City and Tagaytay? Great, Matlitz. It's 7 degrees Celsius. The temperature in Baguio is 90 degrees Celsius, while in Tagaytay is 26 degrees Celsius. So you just subtract 26 minus 19. That's why we get 7 degrees Celsius. And for number 4, what is the difference between the temperature in Tugigarao and Valenzuela? Very good. It's 9 degrees Celsius. Now for our last question, what is the second coldest city? Right, it is Tagaytay City. All right. So during our review, why do you answer all the questions correctly? Great. We base our answers on the data in the table. This morning, we will learn about organizing and interpreting data presented in line graphs. In our daily lives, we deal with so much information that we need to be organized and interpret to see the possible outcomes of events. When we do this, we deal a specific branch of mathematics, which is statistics. So stat statistics is a collection, organization, presentation, and analysis of data. There are two relevance in statistics. We have the data. Data is a collection of facts or information. Then we have also the variables. Our characteristics or pro properties of things, people, etc. that are being presented by data. In collection of data, we have the survey, interview, and observe. After collection of data, we are going to organize it. 
So in organization of data, we, we will use tabular form, just like this. After the organization of data, we have the presentation of data. In presenting the data, we use different kinds of graphs. And one of these is line graph. What is a line graph? A line graph is a graph which uses lines to connect data points to show changes over a period of time. And it has a vertical line called y-axis and a horizontal line called the x-axis. So let us um, study more about line graph. So what are the parts of line graph? Here, here are the parts of the line graph. We have the y-axis, which is the vertical line, and we have the x-axis, which is the horizontal line. And we have also the labels. And then we have the scale, which read them in the y-axis and lines and points. And of course, we shouldn't forget the title of the line graph. So I guess you are already familiar of the line graph. Now let's have this example number one. Example number one, the math teacher of grade five diamond of Malintai Elementary School consisting of 46 pupils recorded the pupils attendance during the Valenzuela Live in Mathematics for four weeks. So we are going to make a line graph out of this example. So first step, we have to gather the recorded attendance. So the math teacher of the grade 5 diamond recorded the following. We have the week 1. There are 46 pupils who watch the Valenzuela Live in mathematics. Week 2, we have 40 pupils. Week 3, we have 45 pupils. And week 4, we have 43 pupils watch the Valenzuela Live in mathematics. For step 2, we have to make a table using the recorded attendance. So here is our table. So in the first column, we have the week. And the second table, we have the attendance. So for week one, we have 46 pupils. Week two, we have 40 pupils. Week three, 45 pupils. And week four, we have 43 pupils. Then for step three, we will make line graph using the table. So in creating the table, we have to draw the x-axis, which is the horizontal line. And of course, you have also to draw the y-axis, which is the vertical line, to make a grid. After that, we, have, we are now going to put the information in the x-axis. We have the week 1, week 2, week 3, and week 4. And we are going to label it as weeks. And for our y-axis, we have to write the scale. So I use here the multiples of 5. So we have 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So we are going to label it as the attendance. Now... This time, we are going to plot the attendance in our, in our graph. So for week one, there are 46 people who watch the Venezuelan Live in Mathematics. So we will plot it. Okay, so it appears just above 45. Then for the week two, we have 40. Then for the week three, we plot it on 45 and for the week 4 we have 43 okay so we have already the points this time we are going to connect it using the line segment so starting with the zero going to week one then to week two going to week three and week four so this time 
we have already our line graph. All right, let's interpret this line graph. So we will have this, the title of this line graph is the grade 5 diamond attendance in mathematics La Valenzuela line. So to inter interpret this table, we have question number one. Based from our line graph, what week has the most number of pupils watched the Mathematics Valenzuela Live? Very good. So, it's week one. So, week one has 46 pupils watch the Valenzuela Live in Mathematics. Now, how about for number two? How many pupils watch the Mathematics Valenzuela Live in week three? So, study closely the line graph very good it's 45 pupils who watch the valenzuela live in week three and for week for number three i mean what week has the least number of pupils watch mathematics valenzuela live that's right it's week two so it has 40 pupils who watch the Venezuela Live in mathematics. And let's have number four. How many pupils were absent on week two? Very good. If there are only six pupils who are absent on week two. So how did we get it? Of course, the total number of Grade 5 diamond is 46. And in on week 2, there are only 40 pupils who watch the Valenzuela Live in mathematics. So we just subtract 46 minus 40. That's why we get 6. Okay, let's have example number 2. Meanwhile, the math teacher of grade 5 Topaz, consisting of 35 pupils, also recorded the attendance during the Valenzuela Live in mathematics in 4 weeks. So here is the table. So the title of this table is Grade 5 Topaz Attendance in Mathematics Valenzuela Live. Okay, for week one, there are 35 pupils who watch the Valenzuela Live. For week two, we have 30 pupils. Week three, we have 25 pupils. And week four, we have 30 pupils. Now, let's have, let's compare the two tables. So we have the grade 5 diamond and grade 5 topaz. So we will have the title as the attendance in mathematics Valenzuela live of grade 5 diamond and topaz. So for week 1 again, um, grade 5 diamond we have 46, week 2 we have 40, week 3 we have 45, and week 4 we have 43 pupils who watch the Valenzuela Live in Mathematics. While in grade 5 Topaz, we have 35 in week 1. For week 2, we have 30. Week 3, we have 25. And week 4, we have 30 pupils who watch the Valenzuela Live in Mathematics. Now, this time, we have to create a double line graph. So what is a double line graph? A double line graph is a line graph with two lines within one flat area. It compares two different subjects over a cer certain period of time. So how to create a double line graph? Same as the line graph or the single line graph, we have to draw first the x-axis, which is the horizontal line. Next, we have to draw also the vertical line, which is our y-axis, to make a grid. Then, we will now input the information in the x-axis. We have the week 1, week 2, week 3, and week 4. So we will label it as weeks. Then for the y-axis, we have the scale. So I also use the multiples of 5 for the scaling. So we have 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. And we label it as the attendance. 
Now this time, of course, we will not forget our legend. So we use the green color for the grade 5 diamond. So we are going first to plot the data for the grade 5 diamond. For week 1, we have 46 pupils. For week 2, we have 40 pupils. For week 3, we have 45 pupils. And for week 4, we have 43 pupils who watch the Valenzuela Live in mathematics. Right. This time, we have to connect all the points. So starting with the 0, going to week 1, connecting to week 2, connecting to week 3, and of course, connecting to week 4. So this time, we have already the line graph for grade 5 diamond. The next of course, our legend for the grade 5 topaz, we use blue color for this one. So, of course, let's plot the data in our graph. So, for week 1, we have 35 pupils. For week 2, we have 30 pupils. For week 3, we have 25 pupils. And for week 4, we have 30 pupils. And, of course, do not forget... To connect all the dots using the line segment. Right. So starting with the zero, going to week one, week two, week three, and week four. So of course, do not forget to write the title. So the title of this double line graph is The Attendance in Mathematics, Valenzuela Live of Grade 5 Diamond and Topaz. So here it is. So we have our double line graph so to interpret this double line graph i want you to answer the following questions question number one we have what is the line graph all about very good mathletes it's all about the attendance in mathematics valenzuela life of grade 5 diamond and tobas okay Let's go to question number two. What does the scale in y-axis represent? Okay, so study closely to our double line graph. Very good. It is the attendance of the grade 5 diamond and topaz. And for question number three, which section had 40 attendees on week two? So study closely the double line graph. Very good, Matlitz. It's the grade 5 diamond who had the attendance of 40 on week 2. And for number 4, what was the difference between the attendance of grade 5 diamond and grade 5 topaz on week 3? So study closely the double line graph. So for the grade 5 diamond, it had 45 attendees on week 3. While in grade 5 topaz, it has 25 attendees. So we will subtract it. So we have 45 minus 25. We get great. It's 20. Okay, so the difference between the attendance of grade 5 diamond and grade 5 topaz on week 3 is 20. And for our last question, what section had the most number of attendees during the Mathematics Valenzuela Live in 4 weeks? Excellent grade 5 math leads. It's section diamond. So if you study the double line graph, it shows that the section diamond had the most number of attendees during the Mathematics Valenzuela Live in four weeks. All right. So, let's see if you really understand the lesson. Let's have another example. Example number three. Benjamin and Chloe love to study. They recorded the time they spent studying for a week. Study the graph and answer the following questions. So here is the graph. Study it closely. All right, are you ready to answer the first question? Great. 
So our first question, of course, we have to write the title. We had Benjamin and Clovis study ours in a week. So do not forget to write the title of our graph or our line graph. So for question number one, in which day did Chloe spend more time studying? Study closely the line graph. Very good, grade five buttons. It's on Thursday. How about number two? How many hours did Benjamin spend studying on Saturday? Okay, study the double line graph closely. Very good, grade five buttons. It's four hours. How about number three? On which day did Benjamin and Chloe have the least number of hours studying? That's right. It's on Monday. They just spent two hours in studying. Okay, for number four, what is the total number of hours spent by Chloe in studying? And so with Benjamin. Excellent grade 5 math kids. So to get this, we have to record first the number of hours spent by Chloe in studying. We have Chloe. So for in, on Monday, she spent 2 hours. On Tuesday, we, she spent 6 hours. And on Wednesday, she spent 7 hours. On Thursday, she spends 10 hours. On Friday, she spends 4 hours. And on Saturday, she spent three hours. And on Sunday, she spends five hours. So let's have the total of the number of hours. Very good. So Chloe got 37 hours for one week in studying. And how about for Benjamin? Okay, for Benjamin, we have on Monday... He spends two hours. And on Tuesday, he spends three hours. On Wednesday, he spends six hours. On Thursday, he spends four hours. On Friday, he spends eight hours. And on Saturday, he spends four hours. And of course, on Sunday, he spends six hours. So what's the total? Very good, grade 5 math kids. It's 33 hours. So, Chloe studied for 37 hours, while Benjamin studied for 33 hours a week. Right, did you get the correct answer? Very good. Okay, for our last question. Between Benjamin and Chloe, who is more studious? Based on our answer, on number 4, so who do you think is more studious? Very good, grade 5 math kids. It's Chloe. She spends 37 hours in studying for one week. All right, it's activity time. So let's see if you really understand the lesson. I want you to answer the activity, do it yourself. So study the double line graph and answer the following questions. Type your answer in the comment box. All right, are you ready? Let's start. So here is the graph. So the title of our graph is Number of Shoots Made During Practice by Joel and Jonathan. Right. Study it closely. Okay. So are you ready? Here is question number one. Okay. So here is our question number one. How many shoots did each one mix during third session? Okay, I will give you 20 seconds to answer this.
Okay, time is up. What's your answer? If your answer is this one, we have Joel made 75 shoots and Jonathan made 78 shoots, then you're correct. All right, how about number two? Who made more shoots on the fourth session? 20 seconds. Time is up. So what's your answer? Very good. It's Jonathan made more shoots on the fourth session. Right, for number three. What sessions did Joel and Jonathan make both 70 shoots? 20 seconds. Time is up. So what's your answer? If your answer is session one and session four, you got it right. And for number four question, how many shoots did each one make all throughout the session? 20 seconds. Time is up. What's your answer? Very good, grade 5 mathletes. It's Joel made 365 shoots, while Jonathan made 370 shoots. Right for our last question. Who is more successful in making a shoot? Based on our answer in question number 5. Okay, for, I will give you 20 seconds for this. Okay, time is up. So who is more successful in making a shoot? If your answer is Jonathan, you're correct. All right, so I guess you really understand our lesson this morning. So let's have our recap. So keep in mind, I want you to fill in the blocks. A block is a kind of a graph which uses blank to connect data points to show changes over a period of time. So what should be in the first block? Very good. It's line graph and lines for the second lines. Okay, how about this one? Blank uses data points on the blank area that connected by straight line to show the block. What's the answers? Okay. If your answers are line graph, plot, and result, you're right. So keep in mind, class, that a line graph is a kind of graph which uses lines to connect data points to show changes over a period of time. Line graph uses data points on a plot area that connected by straight line to show the result. How about this one? A double blank is a line graph with blank lines. So what are the answers? Okay, so if your answers are line graph and two lines, you got it right. And how about the second statement? It compares two different subjects over a certain period of time. Blank line graph shows two line graphs with one plot. If your answers are double and area, then you're correct. So, kids, keep in mind, 
A double line graph is a line graph with two lines. It compares two different subjects over a certain period of time. Double line graph shows two line graphs within one plot area. All right, so this time we have our question and answer. If you have questions, please type in the comment box. Okay, so I got here one question. In what events or cases we can use the line graph? All right. So based on the definition of a line graph, we use it to show changes over a period of time. So take note of that. So we can use it in showing changes in time, days, weeks, months, or years. Okay, so thank you for your questions. And unanswered questions in the comment section will be answered during your follow-up discussion with your math teacher. So I want you to answer your self-learning module in mathematics assessment on page 24 for your assignments. Okay, so thank you so much for listening. Again, I'm Mrs. Elizabeth R. Aguilar from Malinta Elementary School saying, Always remember, kids, that math teaches us that there's a reason to believe that in every problem we encounter, there must be a solution. Goodbye!